Okay, well, let's take a look at solving. Now that we can verify that a trigonometric identity is true by dealing with each side of the equation, we can now begin using trigonometric identities to solve equations. Now, you'll notice here that there is no trigonometry involved here because there are no sines, cosines, tangents, etc. But I do want to cover a couple key concepts. The first of which is if you can solve this, you can solve a basic trig identity. Uh, you can simply subtract x from both sides, 4x plus 2 equals 0, 4x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1 half, no big deal. Over here, obviously you're going to have to do what? Factor. So in this case, x squared, x squared, and I'm going to have a 3 and a 1, and a plus 3 and a minus 1 equals 0. Now. Remember that any time you factor that if you need to solve, you simply take each piece and set it equal to 0. That's so you have x squared equals 1, x squared equals negative 3, and just as you can't take the square root of this, there might be some potential areas where you have no solution because this might not be a valid mathematical statement. You're going to have to pay attention to that when we hit trig functions as well. Over here, x squared, you also have plus or minus that you need to deal with, so we may have to work with a little bit of that as well. Over here, here's the biggest mistake people make. At this point, say, oh, there's x on both sides, let's divide both sides by x. The problem is that is wrong. You cannot do that because if you divide by x, you eliminate a potential solution, especially if you cross these out, okay? Now, in this case, your best bet is going to be subtract x, subtract x. And in this case, you have x squared plus 2x equals 0. To solve this, you are indeed going to have to factor, bring an x out, and now set each piece equal to 0. Okay, so at this point, that is basic solving. Now let's actually go to a little trigonometry. In this case, let's make it, instead of 5x, let's say 5 sine x plus 2 equals sine x. The same thing is going to happen that happened up here. If I take this sine x and move it over here by subtraction, I have 5 sine x minus 1 sine x is 4 sine x plus 2 equals 0. Move the 2 across, and it works out. Divide both sides by 4, because it is a constant. Sine x equals negative 1 half. Now at this point, this is where we go back to last chapter, and we actually have to finish solving this. Well, where is sine x equal to negative 1 half? Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so let's draw it out. Where is the opposite negative 1 and the hypotenuse 2? The answer would be negative 30. So x equals negative 30 degrees. Now, we need to be careful. In solving trigonometric equations, the directions may very well state, solve it between 0 and 2 pi. Well, if it's between 0 and 2 pi, that means it has to be from here to here, and negative 30 wouldn't work, or, by the way, negative pi over 6. But if I have to go around the positive direction, negative pi over 6 is the same thing as 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6. So x equals 11 pi over 6. Now, the other challenge is, if they want all solutions between 0 and 2 pi, it's not just going to be the primary. You also could have the opposite negative over here. And so if it's between 0 and 2 pi, or 0 and 360, you also need to figure out what this is. Well, if that's 30, that means it's going to be 180 plus 30. It's going to be 210 degrees, also known as 7 pi over 6. So that would be your 0 to 2 pi solution. This would be your primary solution. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. The next one, we have 9 plus sine squared x equals 10. Obviously, we're going to subtract 9 from both sides. Sine squared x equals 1. 
Okay, we're going to take the square root both sides, sine x equals plus or minus 1. Now this becomes important because we're looking for the place where sine x is either equal to positive 1 or negative 1. Well, where is the opposite and the hypotenuse both 1? Well, you'd have 90 degrees, 1, 1, or you'd have 270, negative 1, 1. And so your answers here are pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, also known as 90 and 270. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Let's go ahead and take sine to the fourth x plus 2 sine squared x minus 3 equals 0. Well, in this case, I can't use any trig properties to simplify. I can't just get sine by itself like I could in the last two problems. I have to some powers to work with, so it's obviously going to be a factor deal. So sine squared x, sine squared x, and just like last time, plus 3 minus 1, and we're going to set it equal to 0, but just like factoring last time, I need to separate each piece and set it equal to 0. Alright, so sine squared x equals plus or minus 1. I'm sorry, uh, plus 1, then square root it, you're going to have sine x equals plus or minus 1. We already figured out that that's pi over 2, comma 3 pi over 2. And over here we're going to have sine squared x equals negative 3. I go to square root both sides. Uh-oh, we have a problem. Because I can't take the square root of a negative, so this becomes invalid. But even more than that, even if this were a plus 3 that we were trying to take a square root of, I would still end up with sine x equals the square root of 3. Well, sine x, if I look at a sine wave, only goes from positive 1 to negative 1. Root 3 is 1.7 something or other, and that is outside the domain, so even if it weren't negative in an imaginary number, if it's bigger than or smaller than bigger than one or smaller than negative one, it's not going to be valid either way because it's outside the domain. So we have a problem in that case, so it's just not an answer at all. I come up with that for my answer. Now uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw on quite a few more examples. Uh, so let's go with a few more here. Let's take a look at negative 2 sine x minus sine x cosine x at equals. Now, this is the same problem we had where is I could divide both sides by sine x, but if I divide by sine x, I could be potentially dividing by 0. So let's get everything to one side, negative 2 sine x plus sine x cosine x equals 0 by adding sine x cosine x to both sides. And now I have a sine x in each piece. Let's factor it out. Negative 2 plus cosine x equals 0. Sine x equals 0. That happens at... 0 degrees for a primary value, or 180 degrees for a secondary value. I told you you need to know those quadrantal angles fast, fast, fast. Now, so with this, by moving it over, taking the sine x out, and we end up with this. We break it into these two pieces, 0 and 180. You've got to know those quadrantal angles. Negative 2 plus cosine x negative 2 plus cosine x equals 0, cosine x equals 2, and again it's invalid because cosine goes from 1 to negative 1, so if I have something that's at the 2, it is not part of the valid answers, so my answers would be right there again. I'm going to throw a couple other extra examples up, but that should give you a pretty good idea of solving using trigonometric functions.